We're going to be making an, an amazing vegan bread for you today. It's like cinnamon rolls, but it's not. It's bread rolled out like a cinnamon roll, but then cut differently and put into a loaf pan. You know what? Before I confuse you any further, let's just show you how to make this vegan apple pull apart bread. <laughs> So Andrew made this amazing vegan pull apart bread and it seems like some people are confused about the process. So since I, not the baker of us two, and usually messes everything up when it comes to baking, figured I would show you just how easy it is to make this. So we're just gonna start by adding some flour. This is bread flour, but you could also use all purpose. Now add in some yeast and then just a little bit of salt. All right, so now we are just going to add in our dough hook and then add in our bowl. Somehow, maybe, told y'all I'm not the baker. Okay, I think now I gotta pull this thing up. There we go, all right, and turn it on. It's not plugged in. <laughs> all right, now that you got it plugged in, you can turn it on just to misc this together. Now add in some warm milk and then some maple syrup. From here, just let your mixer go for about five to eight minutes and knead your dough until it's smooth. All right, so once your dough has kneaded and it is no longer super sticky, you can just take this off and then take it out. We are going to just shape it into a nice ball. I think Andrew does usually something like this. That's good enough. All right, put it back into your bowl and then you are going to cover it with a damp towel or I'm just using some plastic wrap and then you're going to let that double. I said milk when I was adding that. Obviously we are vegan, but if I do not clarify that it is vegan milk, someone will comment that we are not vegan because I only said milk. So. There you go, it is non-dairy vegan milk. All right, so while you are waiting for that dough to rise, we are going to make our apple filling, starting with some apples. We are using two sweet, no, two tart and one sweet, just for a variety. Add in some cinnamon, some brown sugar, and then melted vegan butter. And then we're just gonna stir that together until everything is thoroughly mixed and well coated. So once your dough has risen, it is time to roll out your dough into a rectangle. You can do a lightly floured surface, that is what the recipe instructions say, but in the frequently asked questions, we also say that you can use a silicone mat. I prefer this, especially with a recipe like this, because it has measurements on there and it is really easy to see how big your rectangle is. All right, so the easiest thing to do since we are shaping a rectangle is to get our ball into a rectangle first, and then we can start rolling it out. So at this point, literally you are just like a cinnamon roll, you're rolling out a rectangle. The good thing about making this bread versus cinnamon rolls is that it doesn't have to be completely even all in one place. So if one of your edges is a little bit thicker, it's perfectly fine for this bread. Okay, so now we are going to pour out our apple mixture that we made and then we just wanna spread that evenly across our dough. So now we're gonna cut this rectangle into six even strips. I like using a pizza cutter because it just makes it even that you can go up instead of trying to get your knife all along the same edges. Some of your apples may fall off, no worries. Just pick them up in between each stack and then just push them down into your bread. Okay, so now that you have your stack, we are now gonna stack, cut the stack into squares. So six squares evenly. And again, that's why I like the silicone mat with the numbers because it is easy to see where to cut. So 
now that you have your six stacks, you are just going to grab a stack and you are going to put it inside of your bread pan. It is easier to tilt up your bread pan for the first half until you get some layered in here and then you can lay it down. Again, if you had apple pieces that fell off of your bread while you were moving it, just pick them up. Don't necessarily put them on the top, but jam them into the side of your bread. It is one of the easiest recipes for baking season because it doesn't have to be perfect. So just throw it in there and it's fine. Okay, so let's talk about before this goes into the oven. You want to let it rise for a little bit, but it depends on what bread pans you are using. So for the one that we are using, there is no room for the bread to go out. It's only room for it to go up. We don't want our bread spilling over or our apples falling out. So we only let this rise for about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, but if your, your bread has room to expand this way, then let it rise for the 30 to 60 minutes. Otherwise, you can throw it into the oven after about 10 to 15. All right, so once your bread is completely cooled, then we can put our glaze on. It is literally just powdered sugar and water. You could do non-dairy milk. You wanna make sure that it is completely cooled though because if it is still hot, it will just soak up the glaze and then you won't see any glaze on there. <laughs> some frequently asked questions. The first one being, do you have to use a stand mixer? And the answer is no, you don't. Uh, you can whisk all of your dry ingredients together and then use a spatula for the wet ingredients. You are going to want to knead this dough by hand for about 10 minutes until it has a nice smooth ball that is not sticky. Can we make this a top eight allergen friendly? You guys know we try to make everything allergen friendly. You can use a soy free butter, butter like Flora or Earth Balance in the red tub that is soy free. You can also use whatever non-dairy milk is safe for you. Unfortunately, we do not have a gluten-free recipe for this at this time. We are trying to make a universal gluten-free dough, but we are just still not there yet. Can we prep this ahead? The answer is yes. It will last in a airtight container on the counter or in the fridge for three to five days. You can either eat this cold or you can warm it up. So whatever your preference is, and then you can and also freeze this bread. You want to put it in a freezer safe bag or container after it has completely cooled down and then you want to consume it within three months of putting it into your freezer. So for the recipe that you just saw us make, we used a 12 by four and a half loaf pan. I understand that that's not a normal size pan that most people have, but we will link one in the description box below. You can use standard loaf pans, but if you do that, you are going to want two of them instead of just one pan. I hope that you liked this video and that you enjoyed watching me bake instead of Andrew and that we cleared up any confusion around this recipe. If you have any questions still, please feel free to leave them in the comments or send us an email and we are happy to answer any other questions that you may have. If you haven't already, we would appreciate if you could like this video, subscribe to our channel if you aren't already, and we will see you in the next video. Have a great day, and I hope that you have a fantastic week. See you later, bye.